Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our super fun, dreamy evening painting that you can see on the right side of your screen. So before we start, let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we're going to need for today. First thing you're going to need is a canvas. I have an 8 by 10 inch, fairly small canvas. You're more than welcome to use larger or smaller canvas. That is entirely up to you. Um, next thing you're going to need is some paint. I will be sticking with what we normally use, which is primary uh, colors of student grade acrylic paint, which is red, blue, yellow, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing every single color that you can see on this painting out of those primary colors. If you prefer to use pre-mix, that's totally fine. You're more than welcome to do that. And also guys, this time around, you might actually find it helpful to have a blow dryer nearby because there are quite a few areas that may need a bit of help drying. If you don't have it, it's not a problem at all. But if you do use a blow dryer sometimes for painting, just have it handy. And as far as brushes, I'm going to be using, again, a pretty standard set. We always recommend having uh, at least three different brushes, large, medium, and small for every painting. So today for this one, I'm going to be doing a rounded slash pointy brushes. So as you can see, the shape of my brushes is more of a rounded slash pointy. So that's what I'm going to do. You can very well do this with the square brushes as well. It doesn't have to be specifically rounded. I just personally find it a little bit easier to do with the rounded for this particular painting. But again, if all you have is square brushes, it's not a problem. You're more than welcome to use your square brushes. And another thing we're going to need, of course, is paint. Sorry, the water. And we will need a paper towel. You're welcome to use a reusable fabric cloth if that's what you prefer as well. All right. And that is pretty much it. It's pretty much all that we're going to need. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with my blue, blue sky. Now, actually, guys, if you have a pencil, that would be very useful for starters as well. So we can outline our horizon line. We just need to put like one line and the cloud line, but it's not super important. So if you don't have it, it's okay. Just imagine where it's going to be. It's not, again, it's not a big deal, or you can use your small brush and some sort of light paint. You can make light pink. Yeah, light pink is actually something I would recommend for this. And you can sketch with a small brush and a light pink. But if you have pencil, that's even easier. And we're gonna start by putting our line where our land meets with our sky, just for us to know where that's gonna be. And honestly, it's gonna be somewhere on the bottom. So you're just going to put one straight-ish horizontal line. And then you're going to do a cloud line. So the clouds have two areas. They have an upper area and a bottom area. Bottom area you don't really care for, but you just want to sketch the upper area. So somewhere in this corner, you're just going to, you know, outline where the cloud is going to end or begin, depending how you look at it. And it can be any shape as long as it's just nice and wavy. That's all we're looking for. There's no particular shape that it has to be. All right, great. So, pencil aside, I'm gonna start with my large brush and I'm actually going to start with my blue color. So this blue, you can just use your primary blue, it's fine, or you can mix your own. So it really is up to you, depending on what color is your primary blue. As you can see, my primary blue is fairly dark, but I do wanna make it less transparent. This color is quite transparent so for me to make it a little less transparent, I have to add at least a tiny smidge of white. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to mix in just a tiny smidge of white. I'm not trying to make it light. I just want to make it less transparent. That's the only reason why I'm adding a tiny, tiny smidge of white. All right, done. See, it's still very dark blue. And with this dark blue, I'm going to color in this spot fully. And guys, another thing I want to mention, if you want to do your edges, it is easiest to do them as you go. So basically, whenever you use the paint, um, certain color, whenever you use certain color, and you go to the edge of your canvas, take extra minute and color the edge. Just wherever it goes to the edge. So you're almost like wrapping your image 
wrapping your paint, whatever you're doing, you're wrapping it around the edge of your canvas. And you don't have to do this. It's not going to affect the front of your painting. But I personally really like doing it uh, because I don't like messy edges. And I do like hanging my art. I like displaying it. I don't like, you know, storing it without any purpose in just storage. I feel like that's a waste. So I always like to have my edges done. I don't always paint them as I go. Sometimes I'll paint them in the end once I'm done. Um, but it is easiest to do it as you go because then you don't have to mix the color again. You can just, you're already using it, right? You can just grab what you have. And um, another option, you can always do it in the end with just like one color, either compatible color, such for example as blue on this painting because you already have so much blue in the background. Or you can do black to have it a bit more contrast. Or you can color match the same what we're doing now, but you'll just have to remix all your colors. So again, just something to think about. All right, so I did that, and now I'm gonna add area right here. So with this blue, I'm gonna start coloring from the right side here, because this is where it is totally blue, right? It's my right side is fully blue. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start coloring on the right where it's fully blue. I'm not going all the way down and I'm not going all the way to the left because this is where the cloud is going to be. And we're going to blend our cloud into our sky. So that would be the tricky part. So I'm just gonna take a bit more of my blue here. I'm still using, I'm using the same color, nothing changed. And here you can get a little bit messier in a way because you only need a solid coverage somewhere around here, right? And there we're gonna start incorporating our cloud. So this is all colored in, this is partially colored in, and I'm going to start blending it into my sky before it dries. So now, sorry, not the sky, my cloud. So I'm going to make my cloud color, and I'm going to do this color that's like a mixture of pink and orange. So I'm going to take some red on the side, I'm going to take some white, and mix them up into this color. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to give it a bit more of the orangey tint. You don't want it to turn into full on orange, by the way. You just want it to have a slightly orangier tint. So I think this is a good starter color. So I'm going to start with this color. As you can see, I would call it still pink. It's just a slightly different shade of pink. It's a warmer pink. So using that warmer pink, I'm going to put it here so you guys can see it. I'm going to go close to my sky first because I want to blend them. So do you see I'm almost like laying it quite heavy. For a bit, right? And now I'm going to start blending it before it dries into my Blue. So I'm going to blend my bottom first, dab my brush on a paper towel, and then I'm going to start continue blending towards the side here. I'm gonna straighten up this a bit because it seems quite streaky. I'm just straightening it up. Here, I'm gonna... So here, once it goes to the top, I'm gonna start blending slightly differently. Here I blend it just linear, right? To have a pretty flat blending. I'm gonna switch the technique as I go up. And I'm gonna turn it into more of a rounded blending. So instead of doing it flat, like in lines like this, I'm gonna start doing it in a circular motion like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a starter. It's like a base 
we're gonna add a lot more over it but I do still want to start it in the same motion that I would like to continue with so that's why I'm doing it in this rounded motion all right so I think this is blended well enough so I can continue now I'm gonna wash my brush again dab it off on paper towel I'll have to make a little bit more pink because I think I'm running out but let's use up what I have and I'm just going to continue and I'm going to finish this now. Here we're not blending, by the way. On, on the left side, we're not blending. And again, if you're doing the edge, you can bring this pink onto the edge. If you're not doing the edge, you don't have to do it. I'll have my blue on the edge in a second as well. All right. Okay. And for the very bottom here, I'm going to make a lighter color. So to this color that I just used, I'm going to, well, which by the way, I don't have any, so I'm going to need to make new one. Okay, done. And now to this color, I'm gonna add more white because I want it lighter and a little bit more yellow because I want it a bit more yellowy. All right, let's see. Great, so do you see just slightly different color? It's a little more peachy, it's a little lighter. And I'm gonna finish this with this color. And notice, by the way, how I'm painting right over that pencil line that I added. I'm not avoiding it, I'm painting over it because I'm going to paint the grass. I kind of want that pencil line to be covered. And of course, if you're doing your edges, bring it all over your edge. If you're not doing your edges, don't bother. Okay, and now I'm going to finish that blue edge. Take that blue. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of blending here on the edge as well. looking awesome so far. I'm going to make more space on my paper towel. Okay, great. So um, now I'm going to start layering my cloud, but I need it to dry up a little bit because my cloud is still pretty wet and I'm going to be laying um, quite a bit of color there. So I'm going to wait for it to dry. What I can do that is not even started yet is I can work on my grass and I'll just start by adding a base blue so the same blue that we just used I'm gonna color the whole bottom with that blue and you can use whichever brush large is great medium is great small is great no problem so I'm gonna take again some of my blue add a tiny smidge of white mix them all up right I'm gonna color this in And now that I did it flat, I'm going to switch my brush. So this time you want to use either small or medium. I think 
I'm going to go with, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with medium. And I'm going to flick some from the bottom up. So I'm going to do this. You see, I'm flicking it from the bottom up. And it creates a really nice pointy tip. And I'm going to do the same to this whole thing, mostly for the texture reasons. It doesn't really need the color. It already has a color, but it looks linear. So I want to break it up and add some texture. This is pretty awesome. So my uh, pink here is not dry yet, so I can't go there yet. But what is dry is my blue is dry. So I can go on my blue, and I'm not going to be touching this corner, but I will add, or well, maybe I will a little bit touch this corner. But I will definitely want to darken up here with some purple. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to grab my large brush. I'm going to take some blue on the side here. I'm going to add a little bit of red. See, it almost looks black because of how dark and concentrated it is, but really it is it's not black. It's more of like a dark blue with a tint of a uh, hint of purple. If I add some white to it, you'll see. See, this is with addition of white. And why it looks so dark is just because it doesn't have any white. So it's concentrated. As you notice, I only used this two colors, right? I didn't add any black to it. So if your purple doesn't look as dark, that's okay. I wouldn't worry about it. As long as it's something between dark blue and purple, it's great color. If none of it hits to uh, the darkness, you can always add a smidge of black, but it really, it's not really needed. And I'm going to start rubbing this color right here. So I'm going to take some on my brush. I'm not taking a whole bunch. I'm taking just enough. So when I just start laying it, you noticed, right, it looked super dark. But as I start... Um, swirling with my brush here and almost like rubbing it in it's gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter and it's gonna be just the right shade so this is what i'm gonna do just gonna continue adding it here if you need to refill your brush at any point do that it's not like you just have to be okay with whatever you originally grabbed on your brush refill as many times as needed not a problem All right. So I added the section. Now I'm going to do a little section right here. The trick with this kind of blending is not to take too much brush, um, too much paint on your brush. If you take too much paint on your brush, it's extremely difficult to blend it until it's transparent it's just gonna look blobby it's gonna look harsh it's, it's not, it, you're not gonna get the same effect so that's i would say is the trickiest part about this and again i'm doing my edges so i'm gonna bring it on my edge whenever it comes to the edge as well and i'm gonna add one more right here Some 
purple here, some purple here, some purple here. If there are any other spots you want to add it, go for it. But I might even add a little bit right here, just at the edge of my left corner to darken it up. But also it's not super necessary, but you could, you could do that. Alrighty. All right, so um, I think I'm gonna move on to my cloud here because this is already pretty dry. It's not fully dry. I think there's like a spot there, but other than that, it's pretty dry so I could move on to my layering. And I'm gonna be layering some pinker colors and I'm gonna be layering some lighter colors, but I wanna start with the pinker ones. And I'm gonna stick with my large brush. And of course, you, the colors don't have to be exactly the same. You can have um, slightly different colors. It's gonna be beautiful either way. So I'm gonna take some white, some red, I'll mix them up. And I'll take just a little bit of this paint and it should be like a hot pink or similar. You know, I might make it a little bit lighter. Let's try this. I'm just gonna dab off my brush and a paper towel so it doesn't look too, no, that's not enough pink, Never mind. And it's always, this is what my process looks like. I'll make a color, I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'll redo it. I don't stick to the color that I don't like. This is good color, that's perfect. And I'm gonna go right here again in this light rubbing motion. I'm gonna add some of that, this one, this pink. So do you see I'm adding it closer to the edge where my light pink slash peachy color connects to my blue. So very lightly I'm gonna rub some in here. Right. See, I, I just love this color. Makes everything so bright and vibrant. All right. Done, done, and done. So now I'm going to go with a lighter color and I'm going to go right here and it's going to be more of a peachy color. So you can use the same spot for mixing or grab a whole new one. Again, it's going to be white a little bit of my red and some yellow. This time I wanna make it lighter. Okay, we're gonna make a color. We're gonna try a smidge, see? Yeah, do you see it's light enough? So again, I'm gonna dab it off a bit on a paper towel so I don't have too much paint on my brush. And I'm gonna go here now and I'm gonna start rubbing it. very lightly so here you create that beautiful texture of a cloud I love it turns nice and fluffy, and light and beautiful. So all the whimsy is added at this stage.
this is looking pretty good and we can actually add even lighter color now so i might switch to a smaller brush at this point and i'm just going to take some more white and add it to the same color i just used you can even add a smidge more yellow there but it's up to you okay let's see it's kind of dirty i think my blue got in somehow so let's redo this i'm gonna take some white again without blue hopefully i'm gonna take a tiny smidge of red a little bit of yellow mix it up and i'm gonna oh too much paint so i'm gonna dab it off on a paper towel and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start doing the same thing lightly in a circular motion, rubbing in the paint and adding that whimsy looking edge. Whimsical edge. All right, and finish up by doing a little bit in straight white. So I'm going to wash my brush, just take a little bit in a straight white. And I'll go right here. right on the edge all right i'm happy with this of course you're gonna have a lot more cloud if you want you don't have to stop here um oops you can have as much as you want. And you know what? Let's make a little bit more of a darker purple and cover it up. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsies happened. It's all right. No biggie. We can fix anything. All right, looking good. So now I want to add a bit of splatter right here and then we can move on to the tree and the bottom part. So for splatter, I'm going to do blue. So I'm going to take some white, some blue. I'm going to make fairly light blue. Uh, and let's see. Oh, that went all over my face. Oopsie. Hmm. Sorry, guys, give me a second. I need a paper towel. Oh my goodness. Um, let's grab a brush that's more stable because this one bounced, right? So when I did this, this brush, because it was this one was harder brush than this one, 
This one was less dirty. It bounced it right back in my face. So let's grab a different brush. Okay, this is better. So I'm gonna splatter a little bit there. That's good. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, the rest I'm gonna do white and I'm gonna do that later. Right now you would just need it as platter, that's all. Uh, we can move on to the bottom and we can make the base for the tree and attend to this part now. So for the base for the tree, you could do still large brush if that works for you. It works for me personally. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my large brush. I'm gonna grab the same dark blue or this time you can have a bit more uh, black added to it or a smidge of you know, red for purpleness. So I'm just taking my primary blue, adding a smidge of white. Do you remember how we did for the sky? And this time, let's add a smidge of red too, so it has a bit more purple tint and a little bit darker. Um, you can add a smidge of black too if you want instead, because as you can see, my, I just added red, but it looks almost black. And with this, I'm gonna start adding tree trunk, start by adding tree trunk. And then I'm going to start dabbing my tree. So I'm going to dab, 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 dab the whole tree. I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. And notice how I'm covering the middle first because I want my middle to be a bit more solid than my edge. So I'm more focusing on my middle. All right, and now we're gonna have to wait for um, our tree to dry. The tree has to dry. We can't really do anything with it before it dries. But what we could do, we could grab our medium or small brush. Let's go with medium actually. And I'm gonna take this darker color again. The, in my case, it had a bit more red in it. So it was like purple -er. And I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow here. So in a similar motion, how we did the grass before, do you remember in that same way? I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow here. So I'm gonna almost extend my tree trunk, make it go towards the right. And also I'm gonna add some right here too. So just a bit of that. All 
right. Um, as our tree is drying, we can work a little bit on the bottom here. And there's one more thing that I want to do on my sky. And that is I want to add a bit of highlight right here. It's going to be a very, very tiny highlight. So I'm going to grab my um, lighter blue, whichever, as long as it's lighter blue. So basically mix of your just regular blue, blue, primary blue and some white. And again, I'm only going to use the tiniest touch of it. So I'm going to dab it off on a paper towel to make sure I don't have too much. And then I'm going to go rub it right in the middle here. We have a tiny, tiny little path of lighter color. Awesome. Don't want any more than that. That's great. So now I can do um, my grass here. And the color that I'm going to start with is going to be something from this color palette. So let's go with some orangey pink color again. So again, I'm going to grab some white, some red, a little bit of yellow. And with some of this color, I'm going to add it right here. You can use whichever brush because we're going to add lots more green there. So this color is going to be barely visible in the end. So that's why you could use large brush, you can use small brush, it doesn't matter at all. All right, great. And another thing I'm gonna do with this color is I'm gonna grab my small brush this time. I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna go onto my tree trunk. It doesn't have to be fully dry for it. As long as your paint sticks, it's dry enough. I'm just gonna add a couple lines here. turned out a little too thick so I'm gonna take my blue back and I'm gonna break them up a little bit okay that's better that looks better great awesome 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 now I can move on to my darker colors and my green. So let's start with green. It doesn't really matter where we start. So I'm going to take again blue, white, and a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to make a darker, fairly cold green color. So you see, it's not very vibrant. It's on a darker side. And how you add it, you just add a lot more blue than you add yellow. So yellow, blue, white, the only components this is what it looks like. And having this color, I'm gonna start dabbing inside my tree here. But notice how I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm leaving a bit of almost like a silver lining of that um, background blue. And I'm going to go with the same color on my bottom here. And you can do it again with any brush. I'm still using a large one because, again, I'm adding quite a bit of it. So I feel like large one works. If I was adding less, I'd probably want to have a smaller brush just to make sure I don't add too much. But because I'm adding a lot of it, large brush is still okay for me here. And... Then I'm gonna make a lighter green. So to the same green, I'm gonna add ye more yellow and more white. There we go. Again, I'm gonna dab it off on a brush, no paper towel a little bit, and I'm gonna start dabbing. So this time I'm gonna start dabbing closer to the edge, but again, you're still keeping that silver lining of dark blue. Okay, 
Okay. And I'm going to grab my medium brush. Now a little bit of the same color and I'm going to add it on the bottom. This time with a medium brush because I already have lots of colors. I don't want to, you know, over color everything with this color. I just want to add it as additional color. All right. And now I'm going to add blue mix with black. So I'm going to take some blue, mix it with a little bit of black. Again, large brush this time. And I'm going to dab that somewhere around here. So darken it up. Just this section. You see, just a touch. And I'll bring this color onto my tree trunk as well. But this time I'm going to use my small brush. Okay, that looks wonderful. Now we're going to add a little bit more highlights and it will be done very soon. Alrighty. Um, let's add a bit of lighter color now so i'm gonna take even lighter color i'm gonna still use large brush and to the same green i'll take even more or you, yellow and white or you can even take some on a side and then add yellow and white because we need uh, to have like a super light color still green ish but a bit a lot more yellow and a lot lighter so something like that and again i'm gonna grab just a tiny touch of it you can dab it off on a paper towel if you want, or not. And I'm just gonna add it right here. Okay, great. And using different brush, wash off this brush, make sure it's put it, wash it off, put it aside. Using a medium brush, I'm going to take a little bit of this color and add some right here. And the only thing that I have le left here is I'm going to add a little bit of lighter blue. So it doesn't have to be super light. I'm just going to take some blue, some white, mix it up, make lighter-ish, like medium to light blue. And with that, I'm going to add just a tiny touch of that here. So I'm, I dab some, I'm going to dry my brush on a paper towel, and then I'm going to rub it in. So it looks nice and super light. And again, we're trying to preserve that edge. Do you see that silver lining of a dark blue? We don't want that to disappear. And the last thing that I'll do, because we're almost done, the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple uh, dots and shooting stars. So if you have any brush that has a rounded back end, you can just dip it in white paint. I'm going to dot it up a bit. I'm going to add a couple of those here and a couple of those around here and then i'll add a few shooting stars so i'm going to use my small brush a little bit of white and i'll do this the two little flips oh and after that i'm going to add a little bit of that white on the highlight on my tree trunk as well right here and you can do this with just white or you can do it with light yellow um, or light peach, something from there. Just some lighter color in addition to what you already have. All right, and that looks awesome. And I am officially done. The only thing that's left for me is a signature. So I'm going to take my brush. I'll find a good spot and I'll put my signature. Yay! 
I'll do right here. Ta-da! All done. Now, guys, notice because I did my edges as we went, my painting looks finished from every angle, right? And it's ready to go on a wall, and I love that about it. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you had fun, and I hope your paintings look awesome. If you guys want to share them with us, there is a link in the description of this video to our Facebook group where we encourage everyone to share their results. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to tip me and you want to say thank you by sending a little tip for a coffee, uh, I would love that. You don't have to do it. It's very optional, but there is a PayPal link in the description of the video. And I do like delicious coffee, so feel free to use it. But again, no obligation at all. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. Let's do this again sometime soon. Bye, everyone.